Welcome everybody, my name is David Hildenbrand. Um, I'm working as a software engineer at IBM. And um, yeah, you will usually find me working on a KVM and QMU for IBM on C systems, so S390X. Yeah, uh, today I want to talk about guest operating system debugging. So basically, operating system debugging in a virtualized environment. So which different techniques do we have? Uh, what's still missing? Yeah, and like give you a good overview of that whole topic. So I have to say that I have a sore throat, so I'm sorry if my voice will fail during this session. I'll then just start like with alternative ways to communicate with you guys, like shake my hands or stuff like that. So get to see if this will work. All right then. I want to start with two quotes. Um, some of you might already know the first quote. Um, it basically says that you're not able to debug your own code. This is some bad news. Um, the second one is from a friend of mine, and it basically says that there is some code out there that you're obviously not, in a technical sense, strong enough to debug. Um, I think this might be problematic in the real world, um, so um, we want to do something about it to finally be able to debug our code. Um, well, I think personally to overcome these definitions, we need some pretty good debugging tools and techniques to make it at least somehow feasible to debug yeah, our code. All right, so in the first part of this session, I want to talk about the basics of which uh, debugging tools and techniques we have, um, which use cases do we have. And in the second part of this session, I'm going to go into some advanced use cases that are made possible with the simulation emulation beyond uh, below our our uh, operating system. It also gives uh, two use use uh, usage examples um, related to uh, IBM C systems. So uh, how we used it and how you might use it in your setup. Um, I'll also give you an outlook from my point of view, what I think, what's missing, and what could be done in the whole debugging area in the future. Yeah, and hopefully we have some time for the tips and tricks section, which contains some pretty useful stuff. Um, yeah, we'll see if we have enough time. And maybe you have so much questions that we like won't be able to do it. Yeah, let's just get started. So why would we want to debug guests? So I was able to come up with several use cases. Um, the first one being, of course, that we have certain bugs that can only be triggered in a virtualized environment, in which case we really have to run the operating system in our guest and debug our guest, of course, to like track that bug down and to fix it. Of course, we can use all these debugging tools and techniques we have also for um, like general bugs in the operating system in the guest kernel. Um, yeah, just make use of the other tools we have. Uh, in a virtualized environment, we're sometimes able to debug our BIOS or the bootloaders, um, which are running in the guest. And that is usually not possible in an ordinary operating system on running on a like, real hardware. Another use case might be um, that uh, we want to see uh, if we have a bug in our VMM, say in KVM or QMU, we want to see uh, which effect that bug, that bug has onto our guest. So for example, if we have like a bug in an uh, intercept handler, we can directly see by debugging the guest um, what went wrong at what point in time. And of course, whenever we debug code, we learn something about the code. So it really helps to understand the code, and hopefully it also helps to avoid further bugs in the future. Hopefully, yeah. So I was able to come up with an additional uh, use case. Say, some of you might argue that it is not really a use case. So I think that you can like really show your colleagues who's the cool guy in the office or in the department. Um, so yeah, just write it out, debug some guests, and like share your experience. And yeah, 
let's see what the responses will be. <laughs> so um, these are some, let's call it, categories of bugs. So how bugs appear in the wild. Um, I didn't make this up on my own, so I took this from the book from Robert Love. So related to operating systems, we can have bugs that lead directly to system crashes, which is actually pretty bad because, like, that is unrecoverable. Sometimes we simply have a kernel panic and, like, our system is down. Um, let's just think about those beautiful uh, Windows blue screens, right, um, with those nice messages, like, explaining everything. Um, of course, uh, some bugs are not that bad. Um, they might simply, like, lead to a performance degradation. Um, for example, if we use inefficient locking, or if you like use some old state polling in some situations, or like some bad algorithms, um, basically our system will still continue to work, hopefully, um, but it's simply too slow for our taste. So that might be one kind of bug. Um, incorrect behavior might be, from my point of view, one of the most common types of bugs. Um, so I mean. Most of the time, your system still works, but it doesn't like behave as expected. For example, if you like just have some wrong calculations in it, deadlocks might be really hard to debug, um, as I can say. <laughs> so, um, on the one hand, they may not be able to be reproduced, or only really hard to be reproduced. And most of the time, the system might stay alive, but in some situations, it will suddenly hang. So that's crazy. And what I think is the uh, worst type of bug that can happen is uh, data corruption related to random memory overrides. So it um, could happen that your system stays alive for like several days, and suddenly you have some random crash and no way to reproduce it. Um, so in that case, um, you really will have trouble to track that, back do uh, that bug down. Related to virtualization, we have different levels where we can apply debugging techniques. So the most common one that like, I named inbound is uh, when you simply apply the existing debugging tools and techniques, for example, we have on Linux in the guest. Let's say you just use perf in the guest. That's it. You don't need virtualization for that. Another thing um, is when you try to apply debugging techniques from your hypervisor in order to debug the guest. So on the one hand, you might simply debug your VMM. So we could debug QMU to find out what's wrong about the guest. That might work in some situations. Um, on the other hand, most VMMs, for example, QMU, uh, provide a way for, um, for outbound debugging. For example, we can what I'm going to talk about later, attach a debugger directly to the guest via QMU, which is actually pretty cool. And um, yeah, the focus of this presentation will, of course, be on um, guest debugging from an outpoint, uh, outbound uh, point of view. And yeah, I'll also cover a little bit VMM debugging. All right, so uh, this is a big matrix, a big table about the current state of the art. I'm pretty sure that this one is not complete. Um, there might be something missing. I hope that it's not some like important stuff. Um, and I'm not going to go over all of this, because this will like just exceed the time too much. Um, so um, on the left side, we have the inbound techniques that like most of you should know um, when you simply debug an operating system. Uh, in the middle, we have this um, VMM debugging. So this whole uh, column is related to um, QMU in this example. So of course, we could like directly use the log files or the tracing infrastructure from QMU to like see what's happening in the VMM in QMU or in KVM. Um, for example, we could like dump um, the VMM. So if we have a process dump and analyze it later on. Um, but that's most of the time not really helpful. But uh, one cool thing is uh, related to system utilities, um, the perf KVM stat tool that I'm going to explain later on, and the QMU monitor. So these are some specific things that are like 
added by the VMM that allows you to somehow look into your VMM. Related to uh, outbound debugging, um, which is like only provided by the VMM, we have on the right side, uh, as far as I know, no solution for logging, which might not be that critical, but we don't have any solution for tracing. It might be done via some crazy GDB scripts uh, that I'm going to explain later on, but that's, that's not really helpful. Um, we have, um, of course, dumping mechanism in QMU, which can be used to simply dump your guest, dump your guest memory. And yeah, uh, we have a profiling mechanism that can be used from the hypervisor to profile both your host and your guest simultaneously. I'm going to explain that one uh, in one of the next slides. Um, yeah, um, which is pretty cool is that we have an interactive debugger. That's what I previously told. So we can directly attach a GDB to a guest and like single step it, like insert breakpoints, stuff like that. Um, of course, uh, in order to debug QMU and KVM, we can use, make use of all of these um, inbound debugging techniques. So that should be quite common that we can, for example, use perf to debug KVM. So what's actually the problem of these inbound techniques? Um, so if you think about your operating system, it is something like the heart and the soul of your whole system. Um, and I mean, if your operating system is, deep, uh, is buggy um, and you have to fix it, it feels some, something like an open heart surgery. But thinking of it, about it even further, it's even worse because, I mean, you're running the debugging tools and techniques inside your operating system. So, I mean, you can be really lucky if you, like, you survive this situation. So what else is uh, problematic about these inbound debugging techniques? Of course, um, you need a somewhat minimal functional system to make use of these. Um, for example, to have kdump mechanism working, you need kdump in place, so early boot code will not be able to be debugged by that mechanism. Um, related to Linux, we have some pretty good tool support um, related to debugging, but um, on other systems that might be not that good, so the quality really depends on the guest OS. Um, in general, uh, when we are have our operating system up and running, we most of the time can't access all the information that we want. For example, it's really hard to debug interrupt handlers or, um, for example, to debug early boot code. That's almost impossible. In addition, it's also most of the time not possible, not that I know of, um, to debug bootloaders or, for example, the BIOS. Yeah. A different thing is that, I mean, if you run a debugging tool on your guest, this is absolutely not transparent to the guest. That means um, your guest might behave differently if you run these tools. And for example, if you think about some crazy debugging situations you had where a bug simply never appeared again once you started up your tracing infrastructure, that would be one kind of these things. Um, of course, one of the most critical ones if you have a system out in production is if you don't enable most of these techniques in the guest, then they are not available. So if lightning strikes and your system, for example, crashes, you don't have KDAM configured, all you're left with is like a hanging guest. That's it. You can't do anything about it. You can't like look into it. So I previously mentioned uh, perf KVM, which is actually a um, mechanism to profile the guest from the hypervisor. So um, what it does basically is it, on your hypervisor, it like samples the, v, uh, the CPU, it takes snapshots of the CPU, it then decides if it currently was in virtualization mode. Um, if it was in virtualization mode, it can like have a look at the guest CPU, uh, the vCPU, and like extract, extract information from that and like position it into the system, into the perf system, into the buffer. If not, it can just like directly take that sample and push it into the uh, perf infrastructure. And what you can then do, you can like see how a workload in the guest interacts with 
the hypervisor. So what's the overhead of your action in the, in the, in the hypervisor? So on the left side, I have a short example where I like, just did some random stuff, and you can actually uh, even profile interrupt handlers, for example. And um, you can even like annotate um, stuff in your guest code. So that's actually pretty nice, I think, and it helped in a lot of situations. Another interesting uh, technique is um, interactive debugging of guests. So we have a GDB server built into QMU, and that GDB server is able to control guest execution and to, for example, read and write memory. Um, that in turn, that GDB server allows for a remote GDB to attach and to like control it. So this GDB server is just like a minimal set of operations needed, and the remote GDB like controls the whole debugging process. Um, so with this mechanism, it is, for example, possible that you have a kernel in the guest without debugging symbols, but you provide the remote GDB the symbols, and then you're suddenly able to like single steps through source code. Uh, if you want to make use of this um, hardware debugging feature, so to say, with KVM, your architecture has to support it. Right now, we have support for, I think, uh, x86, of course. We have PowerPC. We have F390X. And as Paolo mentioned today, I think we also have soon ARM support. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, what Jens mentioned in his talk today is that if you have a really big guest and you're not able to dump it, um, how would you like look into it? Um, what you can do with this approach is simply attach the GDB to the system, look into it without having to dump any memory to the, your file system, which is actually pretty nice. I previously mentioned that um, we might do some strange kind of tracing on the remote GDB side, but um, that's usually too slow and not really what we want. Yeah. So um, this is just a, a list of like my opinion. So if you ever come over, come over one of these problems, for example, deadlocks in your guests, you might look into these techniques um, if they might be a solution for you. So if they might like provide you to debug it any any faster, and yeah, just try this out. I'm not going to go over all of these. Um, as I said, guest tracing is not yet available, but as I like, mentioned it in several of these points, I think it would be uh, really important to have this some, some, uh, one, somewhat in the future. So um, thinking about this whole emulation and simulation in QMU, we uh, might come up with some advanced use cases, so why we would want to debug a guest. For example, uh, if you get a bug report and you want to like replay that bug, it might help if you can like simulate the exact same hardware that the bug report was filed for, um, because obviously a VM should behave just like the real system, just like the real hardware. So that might help that you like um, just simulate the hardware, debug your guest, and you're fine. So that might help. We are not quite there yet, but like we could get there in the future. Uh, another thing is that you can, um, for example, or that you could uh, debug scenarios that can barely be seen in real life. For example, in IBM C systems, we have in general the ability to um, to have um, broken CPUs that can be like replaced on the fly, and we could simulate, for example, such um, broken CPUs and see how the system, how the guest system reacts, and then we would even be able to debug that code that handles broken CPUs. So that would be another use case. Of course, we could also like use this interactive debugging, for example, to simulate bugs. So we could attach to a guest, for example, change the return values of some functions that we called, and see how the whole system would recover. For example, if a driver function would return some error value, we could see, OK, does the whole system crash, or do we get a nice printout in a log file that anything is broken, for example? 
Another thing um, that might already been used uh, in real life is that um, you use QMU for new hardware bring up by simulating some parts of the system. And I mean, if you have the simulation in place, you can directly start to debug the, the target software that is gonna, going to run on that hardware um, by this mechanism that I presented from the outside point of view. Because like on new software, on new operating system in the guest, you most probably won't have all the debugging tools available right from the start, of course. So um, I took two real life examples uh, that we had at, I at IBM. Um, one of these was related to early boot code. So um, one day we upgraded our kernel. We weren't able to start a kernel anymore under KVM. So it still worked on real hardware, but it stopped working under KVM. So what we did is we simply attached a remote debugger to the GDB server in QMU. Um, started a guest and simply single stepped the guest right from the start. And then we were directly pointed at the, the wrong code so we could see where it like broke. Um, we were a, even able to temporarily modify the code um, to see if this was actually like broken at that point. Um, we could like break uh, position breakpoints. Um, we could like have a look at memory, at all the registers, um, and that really helped to like debug that problem in less than half an, half an hour. So in the end, it turned out that we had a problem in our guest um, that um, we checked for some wrong CPU features. So on, on IBM C systems, a CPU has some features and um, Linux checks for them so that they are available so that we can be sure that our code can be run. So we had a bug in there, um, and the strange thing was that like normal hardware provided these uh, features, but KVM did not. So we were directly able to like have a look which ones were, were wrong, um, find a patch that like um, introduced the bug, and I mean the the, the fix was quite easy. Another problem we have when we um, upgraded our um, kernel in the guest uh, was that we suddenly saw performance regression. So um, at one time, um, suddenly um, we had very long boot times, um, module loading was extremely slow, and um, that all mainly happened when we had a lot of CPU overcommitment, so loads of uh, vCPUs. Um, what we used then was a VMM debugging technique that I mentioned previously, so perf KVM stat, um, which um, basically analyzes the VM exits that we have. So it like, like monitors all the VM exits that we have, calculates some uh, statistics, and um, what we did then, we compared the result of the kernel that was working with the uh, results of the kernel that was somewhat broken. And we were able to see that like we had uh, a different number, uh, differing number in the Diag 4.4 calls, uh, Diag 4.4 intercepts. So you have to know that Diag 4.4 is a hypercall on IBM C systems, which basically means that a vCPU is willing to give up its time slice to another vCPU. So that number drastic dramatically changed, um, and that gave us a hint what actually was wrong. So uh, we found the, the, um, the responsible commit and like um, fixed it, and it turned out that it like um, removed those DIAG 4.4 calls from CPU relax. And CPU relax is called um, often when you uh, like wait for a, for a spin lock, and especially in stop machine, all vCPUs wait for all other vCPUs to enter the critical section. And of course, if vCPUs are willing to give up their time slice, the hypervisor can schedule them um, much faster, and therefore this whole mechanism is faster. 
And that's why we saw those, this performance um, uh, degradation mainly on boot up and, for example, during module loading. So, Outlook. As I previously mentioned, um, guest tracing is not available yet. So there's a way to uh, allow the remote GDB to, um, to uh, set trace points in the guest, um, and the GDB server basically has to support it. So we had, um, like I think, two attempts at the Google Summer of Code to get this whole infrastructure in GMUM um, implemented, but uh, until now I'm not aware that there is any implementation. So that would be like the first step to get this whole thing implemented. Um, I think that for a target architecture to support this tracing, at least single stepping and breakpoints are required to like basically support tracing of guests. Um, what we could, could do then, once we have this infrastructure, is that we could um, um, implement further hardware support. For example, in IBM C systems, we have some uh, fancy tracing facilities in, built into our hardware, and if we could make use of them, we could like even like speed that whole tracing up. So I think uh, most of you should be uh, should know the crash tool. I guess the crash tool allows you to analyze um, guest dumps or like ordinary operating system dumps. And it has actually quite nice features. So you can, for example, list all your processes. Um, you can uh, list all loaded modules. And what would be pretty cool would be to have something like a live crash tool that you can use to attach to GMS building GDB server. So we, you would be able to have a look at the system from an outside view. Um, and for example, list the processes or some other fancy stuff. Um, if that is not feasible, we could think about like moving all this functionality that um, Crash Tool has into some, say, magic GDB scripts and maintaining them at a central point. Um, in this case, we could also like make use of all these cool features, uh, which would be yeah, really nice, I guess. Of course, what we want to see is uh, more architecture support for all this um, outbound debugging. Um, and once we have architecture support, we want to exploit even more hardware facilities. For example, in IBM C systems, we have various facilities and features we can make use of, also related to interactive debugging, that are not used uh, right now. Um, as I previously said, um, hardware debugging is not uh, supported by ARM yet, um, but that would also be like the next step to do. It would be cool that uh, we would one day be able to simulate more hardware varieties. For example, in IBM C systems, the next thing to do would be to support CPU models, because we could then like take that uh, bug report example, um, simulate a specific CPU, how that behaves, how that like um, what effect it has on the operating system running on it, and we could then like more easily um, fix bugs. Another thing we could think about is to expose via the GDB server in QMU some fake registers that could allow us to look into the QMU process to uh, find out some or to get some further information out. One of these would be a last break, for example. So we could get out of QMU what was the last point where you did, did a break on IBM C systems. And that could, for example, help us later on when we want to do tracing to find out, OK, at that trace point, the last point I did a branch was on that instruction. So that might be pretty helpful. All right, so that would now be the tips and tricks section. I'm not sure how much time we have or if we will Oh, wow. <laughs> Or, like, do you guys have any questions so far that I might be able to answer? So we could do that up front. No? All right, so I'll just go over the tips and tricks section. So um, to start this building QMU 
GDB server, we have different ways. Um, so we can start it directly using the command line. We can start it directly and tell the guest not to stop before we tell it to do so via the remote GDB. And in addition, which is pretty cool, we can start a, a GDB server in QMU lazily using the QMU monitor. That basically means if you have such a situation that your guest suddenly crashed and you have no KDAMP in place, you didn't enable the QMU GDB server, you can just like lazily enable that GDB server, attach the remote GDB and you can have a look at your guest and that's it. You can like debug it. Another cool thing that I found is that um, you can actually use the GDB monitor command um, to run QMU monitor commands from your remote GDB session. This is actually pretty cool because um, if you have libvirt running, I think you usually can't um, add another QMU monitor if I'm correct. Paolo, tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Or anybody else tell me if I'm wrong. So uh, what you can do then is like simply start a GDB server, um, attach a remote GDB to the GDB server, and like hack into QMU monitor commands without any libvirt involved. Um, if you want to debug any uh, binaries or let's say operating systems in the guest that you don't have any debugging symbols for, um, what you can do is um, simply force GDB to use a specific architecture and then like um, debug on an assembly level. So we did that once and it worked out quite well. Yeah, if you can use, make use of that, might be pretty helpful. Another thing that a colleague of mine shared is that um, the Python binding of uh, GDB are in general really powerful. So what you can, for example, do is um, launch two GDBs, um, connect them via socket, for example, and then like place um, breakpoints in both, for example, QMUs that you are willing to debug. And you can then verify, for example, on a breakpoint level if, for example, some information you get out of your QMU is like the same. And that might be some helpful, uh, really helpful for some um, verification or automatic testing that you might want to do. If you ever want to debug loadable um, kernel modules in your guest, um, there's some way to tell the remote GDB about these symbols. Um, there's a script called getsims.sh from kgdb. I used that once, it worked out quite well but I heard that there might be some conflicts with um, address spaces when loading kernel modules. So I'm not sure if this will always work, but it worked for me. I told you about uh, this, this plan to um, get some live crash tool or some like scripts, for example, to list all processes uh, of the guest. Um, there's actually in the Linux kernel, um, a file that contains some macros that already provides such functionality. So it's located under documentation, KDAM, GDB macros. You can try it out. Um, I tried one of them and it worked, so maybe all of them work, I'm not sure. All right, so uh, this is another um, real life use case. It's some advanced magic. Um, but it somehow shows which power we have with GDB. So what we have on, on IBM C systems is that we have on QMU a so-called PC BIOS, which uh, is responsible for loading the kernel and the initial RAM disk uh, from disk. And um, this um, initial boot device, let's call it that way, is sp specified on the uh, command line we are boot index. Once we booted that kernel, um, of course, we now have the kernel in our main memory. And um, if we do a reboot, so a so-called re-IPL, um, we end up at the PC BIOS again, because on a reboot, QEMU simply reloads the BIOS into memory, um, and then you're able to like uh, boot from another disk. So what you can do in your 
guessed is to trigger some com command called change reipl um, that allows you to switch your boot device while you're in the kernel. So we implemented that feature recently for KVM. And we, what we wanted to do is to debug the transition from your PC BIOS to your guest and back. So um, you would like want to see in your GDB the PC BIOS code. You would then like single step it to, for example, the last instruction where you do the transition to the guest. Uh, you would do the transition to the guest, and you would directly stop at the first instruction of your guest kernel in the early boot section. Um, we were then able to like reboot and do the exact same thing. So we would like stop at the first instruction of our PC BIOS. And one has to know that both binaries are overwritten. So QM reloads, for example, the PC BIOS, and the PC BIOS reloads the kernel. So that's the tricky stuff about that. But we were able to, to get this running. So these are the steps that you have to do. So um, first of all, you have to compile the PC BIOS on your own. Um, once you have that, you simply um, like tell, start QMU with it. You tell your GDB about um, your guest kernel. And once you um, have that, you can say, OK, GDB, you know about the symbols of my kernel. Now I'm going to tell you about my PC BIOS and about that source code. And that's what you actually do with the add symbol file command. And once you have that, um, you can like do what I just described. You can place breakpoints in your BIOS. You can place breakpoints in your guest kernel. Then you can just debug the transitions in the exactly same GDB session, which is pretty cool. So I have some screenshots. So this is, for example, um, like code in the PC BIOS just before the transition. We have the IPL call, which then like, um, gives control to the guest kernel. And if you press continue, and you probably place the, uh, the breakpoint in your guest kernel, you are at the first instruction of your guest kernel. And once you do a reboot again, you, you end up in, the, in your BIOS. And that helped a lot to um, implement this item under KVM and to debug several scenarios we were facing. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Um, do you guys have any questions that I might be able to answer? No? Perfect. So thank you, and yeah, enjoy the rest of your day.